Hello, Alex here, and in this video I want to talk about Ilford's multi-grade paper developer, the true default for darkroom printing and paper negative photography, and what you need to know about it in terms of safety, handling, and disposal. This video was sponsored by the folks at thephotoshop.ie, who have partnered with me for this educational video and video series on photographic chemical safety. We'll talk more about them later, so for now, let's get into it. As always, a legal disclaimer. The opinions expressed within this video are my professional and educated opinions as someone who professionally deals with chemical waste management and handling, but they are just my opinions and do not constitute legal advice on behalf of the folks at the photoshop.ie or myself and do not overrule or supersede your local laws and regulations. For any general queries, feel free to drop a comment down below, send me an email or an Instagram message, but for any pressing queries, consult your council, city or other regulatory agency. As we go through the video and talk about Ilford's multi-grade paper developer, or just multi-grade, for the sake of brevity, we'll give it a rating out of three for safety, handling, disposal, and as always, cost, and then tally those scores up at the end and see how it compares to other developers. This is the first paper developer we're talking about in the series, but hey, we'll talk about more in the future. Ilford Multigrade is a black and white paper developer used for developing prints in the darkroom first and foremost, but it can also be used for things like Harman Direct positive paper or in-camera paper negatives for general purpose photography. It's sold as a liquid concentrate in half liter, one liter and five liter sizes, though the five liter is a bit much for home use as we'll get to later. It promises a very neutral gray tone without going too warm or too cool. And Ilford say that it's best with their own multi-grade papers, but it can be used with any fiber base, FB or resin coated RC paper. And they say it's not recommended for use for developing film. The liquid concentrate is diluted directly before use to either 1 plus 9 or 1 plus 14 working solutions. 1 plus 9 is the default for normal printing or for developing the likes of Harman Direct Positive Paper or No Color Studio Number no. 12 Barita, say in a tank or in a tray. Um, and 1 plus 14 is generally used in the darkroom if your development is a little bit too short for your liking or you want a bit more precision so you slow it down so you're able to get a bit more control. Ilford say that it's recommended specifically and designed specifically for use at 20 degrees Celsius and that a little bit lower is fine but if you go faster or higher than that your development goes a bit too quickly and it's hard to get good control of it so they don't recommend that. Sodium sulfide at 10 to 30% is, as I've said many times before, an antioxidant preservative that prolongs the life of both the stock solution to some degree, but mainly the working solution. When it's exposed in a tray, it's very prone to oxidation because of the very large surface area relative to its volume. Think about one liter in a tray with, you know, eight by 10 or 11 by 14 inches of surface exposed to the air versus, you know, a liter in this bottle with just this amount, if the cap was left off, this amount exposed to the air. It's going to oxidize much more rapidly and the sodium sulfide helps to slow that down, acting as a sacrificial antioxidant, prolonging the life of the working solution to a not awful level. Potassium carbonate at 5 to 10% is a bit of a mystery and I can't quite get a clear answer on it. It's possible that bromide is liberated from the paper during development and given that you're reusing this, the potassium will combine with the bromide in sort of a semi restrainery kind of way, sort of like with HC110, not sure about that. And the carbonate may or may not be just a weak buffer. I'm not really sure and if you do know exactly what potassium carbonate is present in the developer for, please let me know down below and I'll pin your comment. The sodium salt of EDTA has a variety of names, some short and some long, but the general idea is that it's a chelating agent, a chemical spider that will bind onto heavy metal ions and sequester them, preventing them from interfering in any processes, like by binding to the active developer and preventing them from actually developing more silver. This is very important for developers that are going to be reused a lot, like a printer developer that you're going to, or paper developer, you're going to be used for printing a lot of sheets in a session potentially or for the likes of Extol, which also has chelating agents to sequester heavy metal ions, iron and the like, that would interfere with and hinder the development process. Hydroquinone at less than 2.5% is your primary developer, reducing silver ions in your exposed latent image crystals that you've exposed into the paper, growing them into black silver nanoparticles that we see as black, which when you're printing would make your shadows, and a normal negative would make your highlights. Sodium hydroxide at less than 1% is a strong base and almost definitely just there for a little bit of pH adjustment just to get things just right. 
Dimazone S is a secondary developer that works in addition to the hydroquinone. Dimazone S is used specifically rather than phenidone, which is the kind of core that it's a derivative of, because it's more stable than normal phenidone at high pH, and the working solution is about pH 10.5, so it's pretty basic. Ilford say that a one liter working solution at one plus nine will develop 100 resin coated prints or 50 fiber based prints or 50 cool tone resin coated prints. At one plus 14, these numbers are slightly reduced at 70 and 40 respectively. So a little over two thirds as many. One liter of working solution is quite a lot. And I normally use about half a liter when I develop because I don't, or when I print, because I don't print that many sheets in a session and my trays are not that big. So I don't need, you know, that deep of a, a pool to work in. But the point I guess is that if you can get 100 prints out of a liter, chances are if you're using this for home use, that working solution during its own lifetime, which we'll get to in a second, is not going to run out of developing power. If you're in a communal dark room, yes, you might have to replace it during a very, 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 very busy day. But realistically, for home purposes, capacity is not something you need to think about because the solution will probably die before it runs out of useful capacity. The fact that you can use it for so many prints is one of the reasons that the sodium EDTA is so important because it will just prevent it from gunking up and giving poor results as it kind of ages. The official shelf life for an unopened bottle of Ilford Multigrade is two years and once it's opened they say it'll last about six months. I've been using this bottle for about two and a half years and it's still going strong. I top it up with a little bit of butane every so often but I usually forget and it's still fine. It's probably not giving optimum results and I'm sure if I did an A-B test, you know, comparing a print under very precise conditions two and a half years ago versus now, there'd be some level of a difference but it still works. And that makes sense because if it's able to develop so many prints out of a liter of working solution, if it reduces its, you know, effective power by 20 or 30%, there's still a lot there relative to a single sheet of paper. The working solution though, one plus nine, one plus 14 has a very short shelf life of seven to eight hours as stored in a tray or officially no more than 24 hours when it's stored in a bottle. Realistically, you can go beyond that as well. And I know people have gone well beyond one day with a working solution. They've used it for months on end by just putting it in the tray, developing quickly, using it for what's needed and then pouring it back. And that seems to work for some people. I don't know how practical that is for everybody, but it's worth knowing you don't have to throw it out at the end of a print session. But if you're leaving it in a tray overnight, it's probably dead by the next morning. Quick reminder here that the SDS refers to the product as you receive it, that being a stock liquid concentrate and not the one plus nine or one plus 14 working solution, which are 10 or 15 times more dilute. And thus the risks, though still there, are reduced relative to what's written in the SDS. That said, you will still be handling the stock solution to prepare those working solutions. So we can't completely ignore what's written here either. Section two tells us that Ilford Multigrave can cause allergic skill, Multigrave. Section two tells us that Ilford multi-grade paper developer can cause skin irritation, eye irritation, chronic organ damage, genetic defects, cancer, and various other nasties. This is a lot more like HC110D76 than it is like Rodanol or your fixer. It's not particularly nice and it's something you do need to be careful about, which I'll elaborate on more in a minute. Section four brings up something that we've seen in a previous video. It's a sensitizer, which means a single splash now is probably not a problem. A single splash once a month for 20 years will mean you slowly develop a sensitization, an allergy to it, and you will start to develop negative reactions like, you know, um, scaly skin, bad rashes, blistering, that kind of thing that you wouldn't initially. So it's the kind of thing you really have to think long term about with safety. You're not just going to splash it on your hand today, get a burn and go, oh no, it might be fine until one day it isn't. Section six isn't worth ignoring, but it doesn't say anything we haven't said previously. So if you want to read it, you can pause it. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Section eight talks about the maximum safe levels of each component in the air. And that doesn't directly apply to us because we're not dealing with the powders that are used to make the liquid concentrate. You know, this refers to each individual component in its pure form. We're dealing with the liquid concentrate. So, you know, bar splashes and whatever, that's not a big deal for us. What it does talk about is using the stock solution and its working solutions, you need decent ventilation because there are some fumes and vapors that are given off that can cause problems. I mean, look at section two again. This stuff is not very good for you. So breathing it in and directly infusing it into your blood vessels is probably not the best idea. 
And that's something that's a bit more of an issue with a paper developer than most film developers and fixers and the like, because it's in a giant open tray that you're probably leaning over with your face in the fumes. Ventilation is a tricky subject for dark rooms, and it's not something I can particularly advise you on because it's going to be very specific to the setup in your home or shed. And it's very hard for me to say anything about how to, you know, actually properly ventilate your space without just compromising the, dark, the light seal. What I personally do is print a few sheets or develop a few sheets, put everything away and just open the door for a while, which goes directly outside and ventilate the space for a bit, maybe every 15 minutes for a couple of minutes, just to get some fresh air in and make sure things stay at a somewhat manageable level. That's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. This section also recommends eye protection and gloves and eye protection, a lot of people aren't going to bother. I know most people I know don't wear eye protection when they're printing and most of the time I don't as well, to be honest, because I can't see through glasses and safety glasses that well under a dim safe light. That's a trade off I'm kind of willing to make. But gloves, wear gloves. Do not stick your hands and just grab the print by tongs. Use something to grab the print out of the developer. I've seen people who are like, teaching people how to develop prints, just stick their hands in and grab the print and say, oh, it's only for two seconds. That is not okay, because that is exactly how this stuff becomes a problem. Wear gloves. Toxicologically, section 11 says most of what we said before, like in sections two and four, but it does note that this hasn't been tested as its own mixture for these effects, and it can only provide substitute data for the individual components in their respective pure forms, which are in their pure form much more concentrated than they are than even in the stock solution here. So genetic defects, cancer, chronic organ damage, eye damage, all that great stuff, sensitization, absolutely love it. So look, this stuff is on the nastier end of the spectrum. There are a lot of risks, there's a lot of room to be exposed to it, but wearing gloves and using tongs so you're not sticking your hands into it, periodically if not continuously ventilating your workspace so that the fumes aren't accumulating, there are relatively simple things you can do, as always, to mitigate these risks. I mean, this is sold for home use at the end of the day. It's not like you're buying a bag of potassium dichromate to do reversal baths because someone on Fotrio told you to. It's meant for home use, which means it's usable for home use. You just need to be aware of the risks and respect them without being afraid of them. It's like if you're into archery, that weapon could seriously harm somebody. You just need to know how to use it properly. And that's kind of what I'm going for with these videos, to foster a sense of respect for the risks so that people aren't just cavalier cowboys doing whatever they feel like because someone online told them it's fine. Whatever, one out of three for safety. It's not that nice, but you can do relatively simple things to mitigate and manage those risks. This handling section is going to be very short. Section seven says, honestly, nothing we haven't already mentioned, but as before, you can pause it and have a quick read if you want. Section 10, more or less the same thing. It does mention that it does have potential inc incompatibility and reaction upon exposure to acid. So if you use a strong stop bath rather than water for your printing, there might be a little bit of fizzing, probably from the carbonate, which will give off CO2 when it reacts with acid. Nothing major, it's not gonna foam and froth and you know, hubble bubble, boil and trouble, whatnot. The only other things I want to say about it are that it has a standard Ilford wide neck on the bottle, which is great. You don't get any risk of gurgling and the viscosity is very low, so it pours very easily. It's not like HC110, which is a thick, goopy syrup. This pours just like water. It's super easy to handle, three out of three for handling. Section 12 talks about how toxic the stock concentrate is to aquatic life. The answer is, as usual, very, mainly due to the hydroquinone and the dimazone S, which are not great for aquatic life in general. These hydroquinone type things are generally very bad for aquatic life, but also to a much lesser extent from the sodium EDTA, which has a minor but non-zero negative environmental impact. Again, this is in the stock concentrate, not the working solutions, which are probably what you're actually disposing of. Section 13 says something nice for a change that the used, spent, meaning fully oxidized working solutions can probably go down the drain if that's in, in accordance with your local laws and regulations. Realistically, in, at least in the Western world, that means yes, if you're not on a septic tank, you can pour it down the drain when it's done. If you want to be sure that it's fully oxidized and spent, there are two easy ways to do that. If you're developing a shed or something, leave the trays in the shed overnight, you know, locked away from pets and children and all that kind of thing so no one drinks it, and then pour it away the next day or if you need to get rid of it immediately, like you're developing in your home directly, or there are people around and you need to tidy up, 
just pour some bleach in and that will fully oxidize the sodium sulfide and then oxidize the developers. I'm not sure how much, but you know, like half a cup or something in a liter or it's probably way overkill. And that will fully destroy it and it can probably go down the drain within five minutes then. So surprisingly enough for a developer, three out of three for disposal dead easy to get rid of it like you can literally just develop in the evening go to bed and pour it away the next morning what more do you want a one liter bottle costs about 25 euros and a five liter jug costs about 60 euros at the time of recording in this part of the world the five liter jug being a little bit more than twice the cost for five times the amount of developer might sound very appealing but remember the capacity one liter of stock gives you 10 liters of one plus nine working solution that's a thousand RC prints. That's more than enough for most people. I would just go for the one liter bottle and rather, you know, sacrifice the slightly higher cost now than end up with, you know, three or four liters of a five liter jug that goes bad in a couple of years because you didn't use it. For home use, the one liter jug is more than economical enough. And even though the limited shelf life and capacity of the working solution, no, sorry, the limited shelf life and high capacity of the working solution means you're probably not getting a hundred prints out of a liter just because it, it takes too long for one person to do that. It's still cents per sheet, you know, for an eight by 10 print in practice, you're probably talking 10 to 30 cents. It's very, very cheap to develop a Bilford multigrade. And if you're working in a shared space with multiple people or a communal darkroom, the cost goes lower and lower and lower as you can use more of the capacity of that one liter solution in a single printing session. Three out of three for cost, easy no questions asked it's great before i tally up the scores i of course have to give a huge shout out and thanks to the folks at the photoshop.ie for sponsoring this video and video series their catalog is always growing and it's amazing just the way they respond to the local demand and stock what we the local irish photographers need of course they ship internationally and their prices are often very competitive and sometimes cheaper than the bigger european retailers like photo impex retro camera those kind of shops. Recently, I was able to pick up some Lomochrome Purple, which I haven't been able to shoot in a very long time. It's been quite hard to get. And a few rolls of Foma Ortho 400, which I'm very much looking to playing around with and abusing, I suppose. Even if nothing on their website catches your eye today, maybe someday soon something will. So it could be worth subscribing to the newsletter to see what's going on in the area, various exhibitions and photo walks, that kind of thing. Many of which I don't find out about until the newsletter. So it is actually a useful resource. And just to learn about new products and what's appearing in the bargain basement. Thanks again to the folks at thephotoshop.ie for sponsoring this video and helping to keep the craft alive. Now, let's tally up the scores. Ilford Multigrade Paper Developer gets a 1 out of 3 for safety, 3 out of 3 for handling, 3 out of 3 for disposal, and 3 out of 3 for cost, for a total score of 10 out of 12. Ilford Multigrade Paper Developer really does deserve the top spot that it's grown to take. It's, you know, sitting on its throne at the top of the paper world. It's really easy to use, it's cheap, it goes a long way, and the only thing you have to significantly put, or put any significant thought into is ventilation, but that's the same with anything in a dark room. So there's really not a lot else I can say. So that is all I have to say for this video then. Stay safe and bye bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at shaka1277 for new pictures every day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.